Thank you for joining Identifying Funding for ECD in Africa with Foundation Maps as part of our monthly First Wednesday webinar series. My name is Nina Sporer, Manager of Strategic Philanthropy at Foundation Center. And we are a nonprofit organization headquartered in New York. We collect information about the social sector globally and then turn that into useful knowledge, resources, and trainings for those working in philanthropy. So let me start with uh, a few housekeeping items. You can join the audio portion by phone. Just call the number on your screen, or if you're dialing internationally, email mapswebinars at foundationcenter.org, and we'll help you connect by phone. Or you can also join from your computer speakers. All attendees have been muted. You'll be able to post questions in the chat box throughout the presentation, and we will take them at the end. This webinar will be recorded, and we'll send a follow-up email with the recording. So a little background on me. I've been with the Center for nearly seven years, and I've worked closely with funders and philanthropy networks to develop knowledge tools, such as the interactive map that you're about to see, as well as online library hubs and websites for specific issue areas. Many times, funders come to us asking questions such as, who is funding an area that I care about, like early childhood development or water, sanitation, and hygiene, for example? And how can we use this information to better coordinate our resources for greater impact? In developing the tools that can answer these kinds of questions for funders, we've also learned the importance of making this information available to the organizations doing the work on the ground. So that means NGOs, practitioners, and those who are seeking funding. Sometimes they may be one in the same organization. Tapping into these kinds of knowledge tools can give you a better sense of the funding landscape for a particular area and help you identify potential sources for funding that you may not have come across in your prospect research. With generous support from the Bernard Van Leer Foundation, last summer we launched an interactive funding map showing how much funding, how much foundation funding, and bilateral and multilateral aid is going to organizations working to improve early childhood development in Eastern and Southern Africa. This map is free and available to the public at ecbfunding.org. So today I'll be showing you how the information on the map can serve you in your fundraising efforts. I'll also provide an in-depth look at Foundation Maps, the platform that powers this and other custom maps and serves as a rich source of information on philanthropic funding globally. For the launch of the ECD map last summer, I had the opportunity to attend the Investing in Young Children Globally Forum in Addis Ababa. This was an amazing learning opportunity. It was my first time in Africa, and I met so many wonderful and engaged people who are either funding, conducting research, or running organizations that were improving the lives of young children using many different approaches and strategies. I want to now show you the ECB funding map through their eyes and what I learned from them about how they are using this information. I went on a site visit in the outskirts of Addis on my second day in Ethiopia. There, a group of us visited a primary school that had acquired a dairy farm, and we learned about this program from the woman who developed it. Fresh milk is a luxury item in the country, and she wanted to bring it to schools across Ethiopia. By getting cows for the schools rather than milk, she is treating the program as a sustainable business. The school children are able to get fresh milk daily, which has increased school attendance, and the remaining milk is sold to help pay for the cost of the cows and their care. She's made an important connection between nutrition and education so that the two can reinforce each other. This has also led to employment opportunities within the community to run the dairy. She piloted this program in a few schools and was now looking to scale it. She was also considering growing it to neighboring countries outside of Ethiopia with some adjustments that would make it more appropriate in those contexts. 
She told me that she was looking for funding to expand the program, and I suggested that she use the ECD map in her search for funding. When we reconnected later, she told me how she used the map to figure out who was funding this type of work in East Africa. Since she was thinking of tailoring the program for children in Kenya, she started by searching for grants made to organizations doing similar work in Kenya. She didn't know of any by name or whether there were many organizations like hers, so she started by searching the grants list for dairy. So under more filters, searching by keyword allows you to filter the information that we have by uh, grant descriptions as well as the names of the organizations. Since she was looking for additional funding in the amount of $10,000, she noticed that the two grants here fell within that range. It's important to note that you don't want to apply to a foundation that is making huge grants when you're looking for a smaller size grant or vice versa. You don't want to be applying to a small foundation if you're really seeking for a, a large amount of funding. So even though only a couple of grants turned up here, she took a closer look at both of them. So the first grant was made by a Rathgob Foundation for Catholic Activities to the Sisters of Mary Immaculate for $10,000. And what we see here is that this is a one-year grant for the purchase of rabbits, chickens, and dairy goats to provide income and improve the nutritional status of orphans in addition to textbooks, uniforms, and food items. Next, she wanted to look at the second grant. So this grant was made by Kenya Community Development Foundation to the Sustainable Health Education for the Disadvantaged. And also a one-year grant, it was in the $5,000 range and it's to implement dairy goats projects, grow food and fruits, and purchase and distribute more than 300 dairy goats to orphans and vulnerable children and women, especially those affected by HIV AIDS. So this to her sounded similar to the work that she was doing and could potentially be a good fit. So she decided to explore this foundation further. To do that, she went to the Foundations tab and then clicked on the name of the foundation. So here, there's more information on this particular funder, including their contact information, their mission, and information on their programs. So it looks like the mission says that the purpose of the foundation is to promote the sustainable development of communities through social investment, resource mobilization, endowment building, and grant making within Kenya. And because this is one of the countries she was looking to expand into, it seemed like the right fit because their funding is specific to Kenya. She then looked at some of the programs that they were working in. So it looks like they do capacity building uh, as well as they have a program for the girl child, an education program, and urban livelihoods. So looking more closely at those, it looks like the education program supports children and youth who lack financial ability to access education at different levels because they come from poor families or are orphaned. And the Urban Livelihoods Program is about partnering with civil society organizations to alleviate poverty, strengthen, and, um, the, and improve the health of vulnerable people living in slums in Nairobi. So all of these seemed like the right fit and well aligned with her organization's work. At this stage, she went to the website of Kenya Community Development Foundation for more information about how to apply and to find out if she knows anyone at the organization. Since fundraising, as you all know, is not just about sending a well-written proposal, but about relationship building. So back to the map. She then explored other avenues for funding by doing a combination search by geography and subject area. So we're going to give the map just one second to refresh here. And it's always good to make sure to clear everything as you're moving from one search to the next because uh, sometimes you'll see very little results if you've 
forgotten to clear the previous search that you've done. So after we cleared everything, we're going to go back to the map and then try a combination search. So in this case, you selected early education and Ethiopia to start. So it looks like there are 69 foundation grants uh, for this topic that are serving Ethiopia. And the foundation grants are represented by the green bubbles on the map. By clicking on the bubble, you can pull up a grants list. So we're going to take a closer look here. Uh, these grants are sorted by amount from greatest to least. Since she's looking for up to $10,000, she'll want to change the sort to look at the smaller grants. And she can sort through the grants um, by clicking on the next page. So as she does this, she'll want to know which ones are to organizations based in Ethiopia, since she believes she's more likely to attract those funders. And she did that by going to the Recipients tab and sorting by country. Note that the top ones that appear have received very large grants. So she went to the next page to get to the smaller grants for Ethiopia. All right, starting with PREI, efforts to those who are in need, let's look at what kind of funding they received. So they received a grant from the Global Fund for Children for $10,000. That is a four-year duration grant to provide individualized services that meet the educational, personal, and social needs of each child and maintain a committed teaching and program staff to ensure consistency and quality in its programs. This seems like a good fit. Now let's look at the next grant on the next page. So also a $10,000 grant. This one is from Koch Foundation to the Amaro Catholic Mission, and it's for the construction of two uh, classrooms at a Catholic primary school. So this one she wasn't as sure about, but she decided to note it. And then back to the list, let's look at the next grant. That's for $10,000. So this one is from Global Fund for Children, again, to NIA Foundation. And it is for their Joy Center, the only school for children with autism and related disorders in the country providing comprehensive services, including education, psychosocial care, physical therapy, and advocacy. So this also seems like a good fit. She noted these two organizations are both funded by the Global Fund for Children. She also thought she would do further research on Koch Foundation, so she's added them to her list. And she can quickly find more information on these funders in the Foundations tab. So here she's going to sort by their names and then find them that way. So Global Fund for Children. Let's read their mission and find out a little bit more about them. It looks like the fund advances the education and dignity of young people around the world by targeting and strengthening small grassroots organizations that improve education for children who would otherwise be left behind. So this is perfect because her organization's organization is grass, grassroots and quite small, although she's looking to scale and it really fits within what this funder is doing. She then read a little bit more about their programs. So they have a learning portfolio, an enterprise portfolio, healthy minds and bodies, and safety. And looking a little bit closer at them, it looks like the learning portfolio is uh, something that would be well aligned. So the grants that they make from this portfolio facilitate the ability and opportunity for every child everywhere to learn with a focus on basic education. This includes early childhood education. And then the healthy minds and bodies is really about ensuring that children are physically, mentally, and emotionally healthy enough to reach their potential and to participate fully in community life. So both of these seem like a great match uh, for her work since it takes a holistic approach to health and education and spans both of those areas. So this is another good match, and she can find out how to apply on their website. Now, let's read about Koch Foundation. That was the other funder that she had took note of. 
So Couch Foundation, the grants are only for Roman Catholic organizations that propagate the faith. And then it gives a little bit more information after that. So this foundation only makes grants to religious organizations. And since hers is not religious, it's very unlikely to get funding. So she can cross that off the prospect list. I want to now turn to another example of someone I met during my time in Addis. On the fourth day, I met someone working at a large international organization based in Geneva. He was working on evaluating ECD programs and how they can be tailored to improve outcomes for young children with HIV AIDS. He already had a prospect list of funders focused on southeastern Africa, but felt that he needed to make the case for why his research was focusing on Zimbabwe as opposed to the other countries in the region. When I told him about the map, he was very excited by the indicator data. This is data that we pull in from the World Bank. The map has indicators for GDP, mortality rate for children under five, and prevalence of undernourishment. In addition, the map shows bilateral and multilateral aid represented by the yellow bubbles. So as you can see right away, there's a lot more government aid coming in than foundation aid, since most of the yellow bubbles are greatly uh, larger than the green bubbles. So he selected the mortality rate indicator and focused in on southeastern Africa. And you can tell by the legend in the bottom left corner of the map that the darker blue means higher mortality rates than the lighter blue. So it's clear that Zimbabwe and Mozambique have the highest mortality rate of all the southeastern African countries. Indicators for South Africa aren't shown here, but we hope to expand this map to the rest of Africa with additional support. So he then searched by diseases and research, since his focus is on HIV AIDS. And then he took a closer look at Zimbabwe. So as you can see, Zimbabwe has received almost $12 million in foundation funding and about $400 million in bilateral multilateral aid uh, for the diseases and research category. And they have a, a high mortality rate. So next, he wanted to look at Mozambique and compare the two. So Mozambique has received uh, close to $23 million in foundation funding and about $640 million from um, bilateral and multilateral aid, uh, and also has a high mortality rate. So lo and behold, Zimbabwe is getting half as much foundation funding as Mozambique, and a little over half in bilateral and multilateral aid. He, he took two screenshots showing this comparison and included these visuals in his proposal to help make his case. Sometimes including visuals and data in a proposal, as long as it's there to supplement the narrative and not overtake it or unrelated, can strengthen a proposal. I also want to point out that the ECD map covers areas that some people may not typically consider ECD. The reason for this is that we wanted to use an inclusive framework that shows how interconnected all of these areas are when it comes to the development of children. So we have the following categories by which you can search for funding. Starting with child and maternal health, child care and orphans, diseases and research. We also have early education, economic and food security as it relates to children, nutrition, protection and policy, and water, sanitation, and hygiene. Again, as it relates to the environment of the child and, and the development of the child. Now, I want to pause here and ask you to think about how this map could be useful in your work in its current state and what improvements we can make for it to be even more useful. We're going to take a poll of potential types of improvements, so please take a moment to vote. We'd like for you to vote on the most important feature to help us prioritize. 
So here's the poll. What enhancement would you most want to see on this map? And then we have a number of options. The first one is expand to all of Africa. The second is additional data streams, such as government data, more indicators, or something else. The third is more data on funders, for example, social media information. The fourth is more data on organizations receiving grants, for example, richer uh, profile information. And the third is reports, case studies, and qualitative information on what's worked. So please take a moment to vote right now on which of these you think would be most helpful for us to incorporate and enhance and include on the map. So we're going to just give everyone a moment to vote. Just click directly on uh, one of these answer choices. And as you're voting, if there are any enhancements not listed here that are important for us to know about, please send us your ideas in the chat box or email maps at foundationcenter.org. And just as a reminder, feel free to also type in any questions you have during the webinar as they come up. Just type them directly into the chat box. All right, so it looks like the votes are coming in. We're just going to take one more a moment to allow people to vote. So please just choose one of these areas. Uh, we're asking you to only choose one for this exercise because we really just want to try to prioritize um, and, and see which one we should do. Uh, but of course, there may be more than one that's relevant to you. Okay, great. So the results have come in. And it looks like we have a three-way split between the top two and the fourth option, so more data on recipient organizations, more data in general, and then expanding to all of Africa, and, uh, and as well as more data on funders. So that's going to be really helpful to us. Thanks so much for voting. Now, I want to turn to showing you the Foundation Maps platform upon which this customized map was built. So we're just going to switch over from the ECD map to Foundation Maps. Okay. So this is Foundation Maps. And it has close to 4 million grants, representing over $250 billion. It shows funding for any issue globally, not just for ECD in Africa. You'll see a sort of familiar looking map and also list, which can be accessed on the left side, with the exception of the indicators and the bilateral and multilateral data, which are special custom features on the ECD map. You'll also notice that there are additional features, such as subjects, which is a kind of chart, as well as pathways and constellations. I want to go through each of these and show you how they can support your fundraising efforts. And then we'll take a poll to find out which of these would be most useful to you in your work. So starting with subjects. This is a unique and helpful feature of Foundation Maps. That, you can, that allows you to see the distribution of funding over time for a particular organization. This will help you determine whether a specific funder's main focus is education or health, for example, or if they fund a wide array of topics. You can then use this information to decide whether they would be a good fit for your organization. For this example, I'm going to start out on the map. So, Let's say you run an orphanage and provide services for orphans with HIV AIDS in Nigeria. And you want to know which funders are likely to fund this work. You can use the population search to select orphans. And so you'll notice that this category is under family relationships 
and non-adult children. Then you have the option to look at grants based on where the funder is located. So for example, grants made by funders based in Nigeria but focused globally, or where the recipient is located, in this case grants to organizations based in Nigeria, or by area served, meaning grants focused on Nigeria where the funder or recipient can be based anywhere. In this case, we'll want to look by area served. And so this functions as a sort of heat map where the darker the green, the more funding to a particular area, and the lighter the green or white means little or less funding to that area. So here you can view the specific grants uh, that have gone to Nigeria for uh, grants related to orphans or work with orphans. But why don't we explore the funders first? So perhaps some of these funders look familiar, like Coca-Cola Foundation, but you may also find ones that are less familiar. For example, let's take a closer look at the African Women's Development Fund. So the purpose of this foundation is to mobilize financial resources to support local, national, and regional initiatives led by women in Africa. And it looks like they have a number of grant-making programs. So they have a small grants program, and that really focuses on Ghana, Uganda, Sierra Leone, Liberia, and Nigeria. And this is about uh, community and rural-based grassroots women's groups. They also have a solidarity fund and their main grants program that is supporting local, national, sub-regional, and regional organizations in Africa working on women's empowerment. They have a legacy fund they do capacity building. There's also work funding related to World AIDS Day, as well as activism against violence. This profile has a lot of rich information about what this funder does and doesn't fund. It's important to read this before applying to them for funding or reaching out to them to make sure your work is a good match. While it doesn't mention orphans anywhere here, we know they funded work with orphans because of the grant that showed up in our search. Now let's look at the grant to see what kind let's look at the grants tab to see what kind of grant they've made. So this grant was for the Global Health and Awareness Research Foundation, and it's for income generating and family life training for orphans and vulnerable children caregivers. So this seems like it could be relevant, but at the same time, they don't seem to have made many grants to help orphans in Nigeria, so it might be an outlier. So what we can do is remove Nigeria from the filter to see if they have funded work with orphans in the region. Now what we can do here is let's, let's try this out one more time. So going back to the map, we'll want to select the name of the funder. The African Women's Development Fund. We're just going to try this out one, one more time. So we're looking for the African Women's Development Fund um, to see if they've done any other work related to orphans. And so in this case, we don't want to put in criteria such as Nigeria um, just to see if uh, there's any other funding. So it looks like they have made um, about 19 grants that are associated with the orphan population. And so that looks promising. 
perhaps they haven't focused as much on Nigeria, but that's not to say that they aren't interested in that country. So looking at the subjects chart on the next tab will help us determine where their primary fo focus area is and where most of their grant making has gone. So it looks like human rights has gotten $8.5 million and is the largest focus area for this organization. Following that, we see that health has received $1 million. So let's dive in to explore these in more detail, starting with human rights. So by clicking on the pedal, you'll be able to get further down into our taxonomy to see the grant making that this organization has made. So it looks like under human rights, their grant making is focusing on anti-discrimination. And then at the most detailed level of our taxonomy, it's focused on women's rights, which really makes sense with the profile information that we read earlier about their focus area and their interests. And you can pull up a grants list from here to see the size of the grants and their purpose. And the way you would do that is just by hovering on the pedal and then selecting the grants option. So let's look at the second largest priority area, which is health. So we'll drill down into health and diseases and then immune systems. And it looks like HIV AIDS is also a large area for them. So from here, we can pull up a grants list and get more information. Since services related to HIV AIDS are important to this funder, this would actually be a great fit, as long as you make sure to highlight that aspect of your work when applying to them. And if there's a women's rights component or your organization is women-led, then that would be important to emphasize as well. As you get further into your research, you can also use foundation maps to map what we call funding pathways. This feature can help you see the connection points you may have so that you can get introduced to uh, a particular foundation or uncover potential funders who are funding similar organizations. So from here, you can see the top three grantees of the African Women's Development Fund. And you can actually kind of pull them up and down to get a better look at their names and adjust them as needed on the page. This is all very responsive and interactive. So the top three grantees are the Alliance for Africa, African Leadership Center, and Women United Against AIDS in Ghana. You can also change the starting point to any of these organizations to uncover other funding possibilities. So for example, Women United Against AIDS may be worth a worthwhile one to map next, since it sounds like it may have a similar focus. And you would do that by clicking on the red tab, and then that sets them as the first one uh, in this kind of continuum. And so what we're looking at now is Women United Against AIDS is at the top, and to the right are the top three funders for that organization. To the right of that are other grantees that these funders are funding. And to the right of that are other funders giving to those grantees to the left. And so this really allows you to kind of see the connections and the separation of funding from one organization to the next and to make some interesting conclusions from there. So from here, you might notice that the Virginia Gildersleeve International Fund is one of the top three funders for Women United Against AIDS. And you might want to learn more about it as a possible prospect. So by double-clicking on their name, you can pull up a grants list they've made to see if they would be a good match for you. So that's how you can use funding pathways to get a better sense of the connections between and among funders and grantees and to help tease out who might be a good prospect for you. 
The last feature that I want to show is called Constellation, and it can help you better understand how you fit into the funding landscape and what connection points to others you might have. The teal bubbles represent funders, and the orange bubbles represent recipient organizations. The larger the bubble, the more funding related to that institution. As you can see, Gates' bubble is quite large. Constellations allows you to see the map of your network so you can see connection points and better understand how your organization connects to others. Here you can select a subject and geography to narrow down the universe of funders and recipients. So let's say I'm interested in finding about funding for early childhood education in Tanzania. I'm going to put that criteria in here at the top. And once I've selected it, I can zoom in and move the bubbles around to have an easier view on the screen of how I connect to others and who might introduce me to other funders in the community. So let's see. We see that Koch Foundation is uh, funding two organizations in this, in this universe. There's also Firelight Foundation, Global Fund for Children, and Tides are all giving to the same organization. Uh, Bernard Van Leeris in here as well, and Rathkop Foundation. And so since this is a fairly small network, the next step would be to rerun a less specific search. And the way to do this is you can look for early childhood education in the subject taxonomy to see what categories it falls under and then select the category above it. And so it's clear that early childhood education, as well as a number of other areas, all fall within elementary and secondary education in our taxonomy. So selecting this parent category will ensure you're getting more results, especially when some grants are less specific and as a result get coded to a more general category. So you can see that the results changed behind the scenes as we were making these selections. And so now you have a much kind of broader universe and network to look at. This is a fairly loose network of funders and recipients because we see a lot of spread out clusters, meaning that the funders here tend to fund specific grantees, but there's not necessarily much overlap. There does seem to be opportunity, though, for organizations on the ground to seek funding from a more diverse set of funders than the ones who are already funding them. So let's zoom in and take a bit of a closer look here. So we have organizations that are focused on elementary and secondary education work in Tanzania and then the funders, which can be based anywhere, that are giving them funding. And so we see that, for example, Rockefeller Foundation is funding a number of different organizations here. There's also Gates giving to a whole wide array of, uh, of nonprofit organizations. And so the names that automatically appear uh, when you first load the map are the 10 most central organizations uh, to this universe. And so what that means is that if these organizations were to close their doors, then the most number of other organizations would be affected by that closing. <clears throat> and let, let's try to see what happens if we switch to looking at the recipients. Okay. So now what we're looking at are recipient organizations based in Tanzania that are receiving this kind of funding. Before, we were looking at recipients that could be based anywhere. And so this is a much smaller universe and probably one that might look familiar. So again, we see Koch Foundation. There's also Firelight giving to a couple of grantees here. And Bernard Van Leer happens to also share a grantee with Firelight as well as uh, a number of other grantees. 
And what you can do is hover over any of the bubbles to get a sense of who these funders or organizations are. That's how you'll be able to see their names. And by clicking, you can pull up a grants list from there. So here we have Global Fund for Children, and it looks like they're connected to ties and firelight. And then there's also, it's also interesting to look at some of the funders and recipients on the periphery. Uh, so for example, Siegel Family Foundation has made a grant to this organization. And you can pull that up by clicking here and get more information. So for example, let's look at some of these other organizations here. We have a number of different recipients. And if you're looking for any particular recipient to see if they might turn up in this universe that you're familiar with, what you can always do is start to um, type in their name. So in this case, I'm curious about one that I know that's called the Constellations, uh, sorry, that's called the Village Schools International. So I'm going to search by their name. And if you don't see them turning up, that means they're not in this particular universe. But as you start typing, this is how you would find who is in that universe. So for example, we have the African Benedictine Sisters. And by clicking, you can see where they fall within this universe of, of funders and recipients. So this might be a good opportunity to find out which organizations share a few donors uh, that are similar to your organization. And that might be a good opportunity to network with them and introduce one another to donors similar in profile to the shared ones. Also a good way to start with leads is to investigate those who are outliers that may have made some exploratory grants in your area. You may know of other funders in this area who are not displayed here because we don't have their data. The way that we collect data at Foundation Center is through direct reporting by foundations and also through um, government forms that they're required to fill out. And so in the US, there are a lot of the organizations uh, here are required to fill out these forms, and then th that information is made publicly accessible. However, in many other countries, that's not the case. So it's a lot trickier to get access to this kind of information. And so we always try to directly reach out to funders and have them um, submit their data to us in order to ensure that we're capturing it as accurately as possible and really reflecting the funding that they're making the way that they want it to be reflected. Uh, in some cases, that means that it's not um, a completely full picture of the funding landscape, because not all funders are providing this information to us. So if you know of any funders that are not shown here, please encourage them to send their data to Foundation Center to make these kinds of resources more helpful uh, for everyone involved in philanthropy. So now that you've seen the three features uh, that are part of Foundation Maps, please vote on which one would be most useful to you in your work. So we're going to switch over to another poll. And we just ask you to take another moment to vote here. We are gathering this information with an eye towards making improvements to the ECD map and potentially building these types of visualizations into the map so knowing which are important to you will help us better understand your needs. So here we have the first one that we showed, subjects, which is that circular bar chart, uh, the second, pathways, and the third, constellations. So please just take a moment and vote on these and tell us which would be most useful to you as a fundraiser uh, for us to potentially integrate into the publicly available ECD map. And again, if you think of any other enhancements not listed here, please send them in the chat box or email us after the webinar at maps at foundationcenter.org. OK, great. So the results are in. And it looks like you all voted for subjects as, uh, or at least half of you voted for subjects as being uh, more important than the other two. 
and it seemed like constellations and pathways are about even in terms of importance to you. So thank you for this information. It's very helpful to us. Um, so as I'm speaking, feel free to type in any questions you may have into the chat box, and we'll turn to those really soon. We hope this webinar has provided some helpful information on how to get started with the ECB funding map and also with the foundation map platform. So turning back to um, foundation map, this is a subscription uh, this is a subscription based platform, but we have a one day free trial available that you can sign up for by going to maps.foundationcenter.org. And we also make it available for free along with our other databases, classes, and trainings for grant seekers through our partner organizations. So you can find more information about these organizations and their locations here at the second link, grantspace.org slash findus. And we also have a third link available with more information. So while we have partners based internationally, the ones in Africa are currently concentrated in West Africa. That said, we hope to expand to other parts of Africa soon. If you know an organization that would be interested in partnering with us, then please encourage them to join our funding information network. So that third link provides more information on the funding information networks, which makes all of these resources, including foundation maps, available for free to the public. And we'll also email all of these links out after the webinar. So we have 10 minutes left for questions. So please type in your questions, and we'll do our best to answer them as they come in. So we're just going to take a moment now to take a look at the questions that have come in so far. So we're going to be hearing um, the questions from Davis Winslow, and we'll just take them one at a time as they've been submitted to us. So as you're hearing your questions answered, and if you think of other questions, please just type them into the chat box. OK. So we have our first question um, from Barbara, who runs an NGO in South Africa. And Barbara asked um, why the map doesn't include South Africa. Uh, thanks, Barbara. That's a great question. So the scope of this project um, that was funded by Bernard Van Leer Foundation really was intended to focus on Eastern Africa. Um, and so the way that they defined Eastern Africa was a, a fairly broad um, definition. So it covered some countries in Southern Africa as well. Uh, but really, the reason for this is that the foundation focuses uh, their funding on Tanzania and Uganda. So that's why they were interested primarily in Eastern Africa to start, because they wanted to get a sense of the funding landscape there and how they can coordinate their funding with other funders working in the space to, uh, to have greater impact in the region. So that's kind of how the map started out. We're certainly open to um, broadening the scope of the map uh, as long as we're able to, to get support to do that work. But we would really love to expand it to the rest of Africa, um, including South Africa, and show how much funding is going to all these other countries as well. And we think it's, it's an important thing to focus on. So hopefully that's something that will come in the future, future uh, phases of this work. Great. So we have another question about the taxonomy that Foundation Maps uses, and Mark asked if it's possible to see the full taxonomy of the grant subjects in Foundation Maps without having to click through the levels in the graph. Yes, that's a great question. Um, it is possible to see the full taxonomy. We even have a separate web page dedicated to it. Uh, it's also possible to download it as well. So if you're interested in exploring it further, I suggest you visit taxonomy.foundationcenter.org. And this is another link we can share after the webinar as well. 
Uh, and, and so just another note on foundation maps. Um, when using the subject taxonomy, there's the option to browse and kind of click through all of the different layers as I showed. But you can also start typing in uh, a keyword. And uh, th there's an autocomplete that kicks in when you start typing in that word. And then that will show you, you know, where in the taxonomy uh, that particular subject belongs. OK. We have another question about the data in Foundation Maps and how often it's updated um, for all listed information indicating both active recipients and funders? Great question. Um, so the data in Foundation Maps is updated on a weekly basis. And basically, um, staff at Foundation Center process grants information uh, regularly. So we're constantly getting in new data. We're constantly pulling it from the tax forms that I mentioned or receiving it um, directly from funders as they email it to us. Um, and then it goes through a processing stage where it gets coded and classified against the taxonomy and then loaded into these different databases. So as it's being processed and cleaned up, on a weekly basis, the foundation maps gets refreshed with this new information. Okay. We have another question about the difference between looking at grants um, based on area served versus recipients and how those are different. Sure. Yeah. So th this is a little bit of a tricky concept uh, sometimes. So uh, let me try to explain that as best I can. So there's a few options in how you can view the grants information that we have. You can view it by the location of the recipient. So for example, a grant that went to um, a nonprofit based in New York, but really the funding was intended for um, children in Ethiopia, for example. So if you're, if you're looking by uh, location of recipient, that grant on the map will turn up in New York. And so you'll see, you'll see the, the grant numbers reflected in New York for that. However, if you're looking by area served, you're going to find that grant in Ethiopia because that's the main uh, intended purpose of the grant is to serve children in Ethiopia. So you won't see it in New York, but you'll see it in Ethiopia. And so we're giving um, people the option to search in these different ways by the location of the recipient, by the location of the funder, uh, and by the area served of the grant. Uh, and another thing to note is that sometimes there's just not enough information about the area that a grant is serving. This is something that we've worked um, a lot with funders to help supply that information to us. But especially when we get the information from tax forms or from other, other places, from websites, or not directly from funders, we don't always have enough information available to know exactly the region that a grant is serving. And in that case, it's going to show up in the uh, location of the recipient, because that's as much information as we have. Great. Um, we have one more question uh, that's a good one from someone who works at the Firelight Foundation. And they noticed as we were walking through this that there were grants um, in the database that were given to both Firelight Foundation as well as Firelight Endowment. And um, to summarize, they're basically interested in who they can contact to update that information um, if we need to update the map. Sure, yeah. So anytime that there is uh, information that needs to be updated or that um, you have questions about, uh, you can feel free to email egrants at foundationcenter.org. Um, so this will help us you know, maintain as accurate um, a picture of the funding landscape as possible. So at times, uh, it is helpful you know, to, for someone to reach out and tell us that some of the information needs to, to be updated that's reflected in here. Uh, so that would be the email to, uh, to reach out to for updates. OK, there's a question about cost for foundation maps um, after the one-day free trial. Sure. So um, we have pricing information available at, um, on the website at maps.foundationcenter.org. And so that's where you would go to uh, find out more about the two uh, levels of foundation maps. We have a premium account and we have a professional account. And so the pricing is $1,999 for the professional account, which offers all of the features that we showed. This is um, pricing on an annual basis. 
and uh, the pricing for a premium account, which uh, has a limited number of features, is $1,299. Um, so again, you can find all of that information on maps.foundationcenter.org. So we're just about out of time, and I want to thank everyone for joining us for today's webinar. You can explore the ECD funding map by going to ecdfunding.org. To find out more about this or other tools and services that we offer, please visit our website, foundationcenter.org. And finally, please take a moment to tell us how you heard about this webinar before you sign off. So this will really help us better understand uh, how we can reach uh, audiences uh, with th these kinds of tools and information. So just take a moment to type in uh, where you heard about this webinar from. And as a reminder, we'll send a follow-up email with the recording link as well as the links that we mentioned today. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining us and for your time. Have a great day or night.